Okay, fantastic. Now, let me start this way, right? In terms of um, level of infringements, <laughs> it's not something peculiar to Nigeria, but let me start from Nigeria because, as they say, let's start from home before we go international. Okay. Um, as of 2021, the Central Bank of Nigeria um, uh, reported that banks in Nigeria refunded over 89 billion in SS bank charges to various customers. When I say various customers, that includes um, individuals, companies, and even government agencies and all that stuff, you know. So the figures by my research between um, 2001 and 2023, which is right, has been between the range of 60 billion and 90 billion on a yearly basis. So it wow. is that huge. Now, four of the most uh, affected countries, let me use that term, in terms of SS bank charges, are Nigeria, India, United States, and Brazil. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. So you are going to be my uh, yeah my first guest for 2020 24. Fantastic. How have you started this year? Well, the year is not going to start until the next um, one week or thereabouts. Because um, all my plans, um, most of the people I work with, mm -hmm. um, they are on a holiday. holiday. Okay. okay. Yeah, they've been on holiday since um, um, like the first week of December. So wow. most of my appointments, most of, most of my appointments have been scheduled for um, the second week of January. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's uh, what happens during holiday time. Everybody yeah. wants to go away. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Now, see, you know I, mean? uh, I I normally start by asking my guests to introduce themselves and uh, tell my guest, my audience who they are. See, for you, eh, for you, I want you to introduce introduce yourself, tell them who you are, and also tell them eh, how long. We have been on this journey mm? because our journey is a long, long one. All right. So, <laughs> Yomi, please introduce yourself and tell my get my audience who you are and what you do. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Olu Yomi Martins. A lot of my friends call me Yomi Martins. I'm a financial services uh, consultant. I'm also. Uh, a business school coach, a mentor, and all that stuff. And above all, I'm a bank statement forensic auditor, right? I've been in banking and consulting right now for over 23 years. I started my career in Citibank, Nigeria. I moved to Assets Bank and Keystone Bank. I've worked in virtually every, every department imaginable from banking operations to audit to uh, product development, business analytics, and uh, commercial banking, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I presently run a learning and um, development firm called Black Mantis and Company Limited, uh, based in Lagos, Nigeria, but with clientele all over. Uh, we render serve our services to blue chip companies, both quoted companies and um, uh, financial institutions as well. And funny enough, I've known Ekene Bayer for like donkey years. Let me put it that way. If there's anything like, no, it's not even donkey years. It's us years. Because donkey <laughs> would be too small, right? Um, yeah. I think way, way back, I, I left high school sometime um, in the early 90s. Mm. And that's when our journey actually began. Um, no, you're, 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 miss, you're missing a point, eh? See, no, I wanted to first start how we met. Okay, okay. We met, okay. Do you we, we, we met, I'm, okay. I'm not but but I, have, I have known you for a long a long time before that. Mm -hmm. When you were before friends with the, with the... Okay, yeah. With the uh, Okusus, okay? Okusus. Yes, when you were friends with them, eh? 
Eh? Of course, yeah. they were my, they were my neighbors, right? Yes. And you were you were friends with them, and they were friends with my younger sisters. Hey, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So that that's even that's even way way longer than exactly. that. Exactly. That means. We must we we must have known each no, other. Say we, no, we didn't know each other. Around, okay, um, me and you, me and nine or thereabouts. Okay, okay, yeah, exactly. So so we must have known each other around 1989 or thereabouts, mm. right? And um, even after you know after that post high school, uh, we still kept our relationship um, going strong, right? I remember those days um, um, when I finished my youth service and everything. I used to sleep over in Bagada Estate then. Mm, I yeah, and Akene okay. would go to the University of Lagos to play basketball yeah. every Saturday. Then we'll come okay. back later. That, that's, and, um, that's true. That's true. And, and, and take a chill somewhere in the estate, a place called Roots, if you can remember. Yes. A place my, called that's Roots. My, that's, that was my joint. <laughs> yes. So, so funny enough, one day Akene just asked me that, ah, you mean this one that... Uh, you are working in an NGO. Wouldn't you like to work in banking? I said, ah, why not? You understand? Then mm. we started off the journey. We started off the journey. Introductions were made. You know, tests were written. Interviews were written. We started working together. That yeah. was not the end of the story. No, you that, know? that's not. After that's not the end of the story. After, after we started working together, I kind of was in HR. I was in banking operations. I now decided to get married. And uh, Ekene Ek happened to be my best man. Okay. Because I couldn't okay. think about okay. any, that, any, that's anyone true. else. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, it's been a roller coaster journey. Even though he, ha he has he ha he had I've asked me several several <laughs> times during the period of um, highly skilled migrant program that I should uh, immigrate to the UK, you know. But that's that's a story for another day. Yeah. Where are we right now? And we are still. <laughs> waxing strong mm. for you know us years as i said okay okay see uh our journey is uh interesting uh two people coming out from the same neighborhood yeah you know I me mean? yeah uh thank you for being here uh, thank you for having me see the work we have been doing has been yeah exciting okay we have learned so many things. We have learned so many skills, uh, especially, especially uh, CC, CC Group for one uh, trained me in so many areas. Okay, and I'm sure uh, they also trained you in so many areas. Uh, now you are doing something bank statement forensics. And it's uh, yeah, it's it seems a little bit uh, new, okay. But before going into that, because okay. the 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 basis of of that work is the kind of charges that banks hand out to their customers, okay. So tell 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 my audience the various forms of bank charges they are in Nigeria in particular? What kind okay. of charges and fees that banks take away from customers? Okay. Um, basically, there, there is actually a, a wide array of uh, bank charges. And um, when you are talking about bank statement forensic audits, we mm. shouldn't um, narrow our mind to just bank charges okay because when you are doing i'm, I'm still going to come back to bank charges but I just okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's good things. you are the experts okay yeah. me i'll be well, well, nobis <laughs> <laughs> well, when we are talking about bank statement forensic audit we are not just talking about bank charges we are talking about you know a the a, a thorough forensic audit of the bank statement in terms of not just fees but also what is due to the client based on various agreements they might have. A like simple example of an agreement might be interest on daily balances, right? Okay. If, if banks do not adhere to the agreed interest on daily balances, right, um, it, it can be reviewed and um, they will be liable to pay, you know, with interest. And that's one thing that a lot of people do not know. Mm -hmm. They'll be liable to pay with interest. 
Now, when we're talking about bank charges, as I said, there's an array of charges, right? One, there are some statutory charges like um, um, current account maintenance fee, which is currently one per meal. When okay. I say one per meal, a, a layman will say, what do I mean by one per meal? One per meal simply means 1,000 divided by 1 million. Okay. So that is one per meal. So approximately that's 0 0.001, right? Okay. Multiplies Percentage, by, I, I guess. Uh, okay. The amount involved. You understand? Okay. Yeah. So that is one of the most common forms of um, bank charges, which is the account, uh, current account maintenance fee. Now, okay. other charges um, include interest on loans, right? When a customer um, obtains a loan or a facility from a bank, yeah. um, obviously it's liable to pay interest on those facilities, depending on the kind of um, facility being obtained, whether it's a, it's a salary advance, is it an overdraft, um, is a tenured uh, loan, and is a mortgage, you understand? All those kind of facilities attract different kinds of, of fees, yeah. right? And mind you, those fees are also negotiable and all okay. that stuff. So, um, you know, those are basic, basic forms that the layman would obviously uh, be used to. Now, when we want to get a little bit advanced, we now start talking about uh, things like probably LC charges, yeah. right? That's on letters of credit and all yeah. that. I have to break it down so that non-bankers can also understand what I'm talking about. Mm. Uh, letters of credit are for, you know, uh, when you want to import and all that yeah. stuff. Import and, uh, yeah. It mm -hmm. can either be backed by cash or... Uh, uh, backed by a facility given to you by the bank, but obviously collateralized as well. So those are basic types of charges. Now, yeah. you also have charges that are related to recoveries. That means cost recovery on a particular okay. service. A typical example is your SMS charge. That's your SMS message charge. When you do a transaction on your account and the bank you know, sends you an SMS message, mm. they should not charge a cobble higher or a cobble less than what the service provider has charged the bank for that message being sent. That means if the service provider charged four naira for an SMS, which is what is obtainable currently, the bank cannot recover more than four naira. Now, recoverables. Other recoverables include checkbook issuance, um, um, you know, um, token issuance, right? Tokens that you use in validating your transactions that bring out your one-time passwords or one-time PIN and all that stuff. They are supposed to do, banks are supposed to charge you on cost recovery, how much they used in printing the checkbook or how much they used in producing the token. And mm. there are some charges also that are, uh, some services also that are totally free. For instance, if you are, if you are obtaining your statement of accounts, right via email banks are not supposed to charge you anything for it because it's fair email right uh is except you are requesting at copy of those statements are they supposed to charge you so there is an array it depends on how deep we want to go into it yeah and all that stuff yeah so i, I just give you an overview of the kind of charges okay. that we might, we might okay. have yes so, so yeah seeing all these kind of charges that banks are allowed to to place on their customers what is the level of uh, infringement okay in terms of excess excess bank charges in nigeria and uh, maybe maybe if you don't globally and how has it has it affected individuals corporations and maybe governments okay fantastic now let me start this way right in terms of um level of infringements <laughs> it's not something peculiar to nigeria but let me start from nigeria because as they say let's start from home before we go international okay um as at 2021 the central bank of nigeria um uh, reported that banks in nigeria we funded over 89 billion in SS bank charges to various customers. When I say various customers, 
that includes um, individuals, companies, and even government agencies and all that stuff, you know. So the figures by my research between um, 2001 and 2023, which is just, you know, if you um, just go. a day or two a week, right? has been between the range of 60 billion and 90 billion on a yearly basis. So it wow. is that huge. Now, four of the most uh, affected countries, let me use that term, in terms of SS bank charges, are Nigeria, India, United States, and Brazil, particularly. Okay. Now, wow. let me use the example of, let me use the example of, um, of uh, the United States. I'll use one figure, right, um, which happened uh, in 2018, if I'm not wrong. Citibank New York refunded credit card credit card users that they overcharged. I'm talking about credit card users alone. Mm. I'm not talking about other products that they have. Yeah, Credit card users alone, they refunded $355 million US <laughs> in SS bank charges. I, wow. I kid you not. I kid you not. So I'm just trying to tell you the magnitude of that this problem. In Brazil as well, in India and, and all that, the figures are not, you know, that pleasant either. So it's actually a global problem. Maybe mm. it's because of the population in these countries. That's where or either the population or the level of um, um, monitoring and implementation and all that stuff, or the like, regulatory bodies and all that stuff. But the issue is that it's a major problem. And now, how does it affect the average Joe? You make profits, and at the end of the day, your profit is being depleted based on the SS charges that you are paying, that you are not supposed to be paying. That's how it affects the common man. So if you are supposed to make, let's say, 10 Naira, as your profit after tax. At the end of the day, because of SS bank charges, it can be as low as seven naira and all that stuff, you know? So it is it is that bad. It is that bad. And it's not just about individuals and corporates alone that it affects, even governments. I would not like to mention the government past. Between the year 2018 and 2021 alone, right, we were able to recover over two billion in 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 essence in refund for various customers including including government establishments do you wow. understand so the, you can imagine how far two billion naira would go in terms of infrastructure provision for a country so that is the magnitude of the problem we are facing in terms of ss bank charges uh, and, 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 I and i will assume that uh you, you didn't work for ma the majority of uh, companies or in institutions. You just worked for a few and you were able to recover that kind of massive amount. Wow. My, 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 kind of, my kind of job, Bank Statement Forensic Audit, is a very, very, very sensitive job. Hmm. Now, what do I mean by it's a very, very sensitive job? In the sense that, one, a lot of people based on ethical and integrity issue that affects them. Mm. They won't want to give you their bank statements to review because they are afraid that, you know, probably you're a government spy or a tax authority spy and they are underpaid on their, on their tax liabilities and everything. Except they really know you well, would they give you the job to do? Since I started my practice, I've handled approximately over 120 clients. Wow. So okay. and wow, notes, that's, that's huge. And notes of the 120 clients that I'm talking about, it's not every time you do a bank statement forensic audit that you find exceptions. Yeah. Okay. No. okay. It, it, it might not be. It might not okay. be more yeah. than. Talk, talk. Talk. Talk about. Talk about that. Yeah. Let's see. Let's yes. See so it, it's it's not as if you see you might do a review of six years of a particular company's bank statement. And actually, there will be really nothing. The bank, you know, yeah. were above board in terms of- um, Very very good, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Job. 
Yes. But where you find errors most of the time are, are, is when you are reviewing facilities. Okay. That is credit relationships. Okay. Right? Because that's where the problem normally happens most of the time. Or you are reviewing compliance with agreed terms. What do I mean by agreed terms? Terms like um, um, interest, interest on daily balances. Okay. Right? You might say, okay, give me interest on daily balances of 5%. Yeah. And by the time you start doing your computation, you will discover that the interest the bank actually gave you probably is no more than 3%. Mm. But you won't bother calculating because you don't yeah. even know how to calculate it in the first place. <laughs> a lot of people don't know how to do the calculation in the first yeah. place. Yeah, They don't know. Let me give you an example. A, a friend of mine uh, obtained a mortgage. In fact, a colleague of mine obtained a mortgage. You know, he's a banker and all yeah. that stuff. But funny enough, it's not all bankers oh, that come, even come know. On. Can yeah. I tell you one thing? Let me, let me start this way. You know, I told you before that I've gone through almost every aspect of banking. Yeah. Right. I've headed almost every aspect of banking. Right. While I was head of investigation and regional head of clearing, right, I never knew how to do the calculations myself. Yeah. Okay. Of this bank statement for us. Now it wasn't. It wasn't until I became the head of investigation. Mm. of a, an international bank in Nigeria that I had to learn how to do it. Now, let me tell you another secret. I was in corporate audit group. Corporate audit group itself had various departments, which I added at one point or the other. I was head of implement, implement, audit implementation and monitoring. I was head of head office audit. I was head of uh, branch audit Abuja and not. Okay. I was head of investigation. The only thing I didn't add or do was be a chief inspector of a Nigerian bank. Okay. That's the only thing <laughs> I never did. Now, let me tell you the truth. Let me blow your bubble. In my team, when I was head of investigation, right? The investigation was divided into two. <clears throat> there was bank forensic audit. Yeah. And there was fraud investigation. Okay. Right. Now you'll be surprised that those in fraud investigation reporting to me. Mm. Did not know how to do bank statement for us audit. Okay. Even though we were in the same, same department, big, yeah. investigation. Mm -hmm. the only people that handled bank statement forensic audit that were reporting to me were just four people. Mm. Can you beat that? Yeah. So, so in the all corporate audit group, there were just four people who were expertly competence yeah you mark my adjective expertly yeah, yeah. competent to handle it the others might be able to know the periphery yeah right but when, once they eat a brick wall they will still need to come back to us yeah to enlighten them as regards where they went wrong or where they went right yeah. and all that stuff so so it's it's an ex expert people in audit department function have a knowledge gap you can mm. now imagine other departments that we are yeah. talking about. Yeah. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I understand. Now, yeah. you, you you have written a book yes. called How to Conduct a Bank Statement Forensic Audit. Yes. Okay. Now. It's right is here. It, is, it, is it for everyone or for certain kind of people? Okay, fantastic. The book, Bank Statement Forensic, How to Conduct a Bank Statement for Forensic Audit. Yeah. Let me tell you how it actually came about. Okay. Right? Um, I left banking in 2014 and I started off my consulting job, yeah. right? Training in various banking schools and training in other corporates and yeah. all that stuff. And um, I normally also, as part of my consulting job, I normally organize regular trainings on bank statement forensic audits and i realized that most of the people that attend my trainings are fellows of the institute of you have the chartered institute of accounts and okay. accountancy accountancy and all that stuff so wow these guys are accountants right but they are not necessarily experts in bank statement forensic audit because yeah. what they know is general 
forensic audit. Because you need to understand the intricacies of the laws, not just understand the intricacies of the laws, know how to interpret the law. Okay. Right? Know the appropriate interpretation of the law. Now, most of the time, it happened several times. At least I've organized trainings now for over uh, 20 times, right? Okay. Most of the time when I organize the trainings and all that stuff, I normally give my my participants the PowerPoint presentation and everything. They always come up with this statement. Ah, Mr. Martins, don't you have a book on this thing? I said, no, I don't. Ah, I'm not saying that this PowerPoint presentation is not adequate, to, but Mr. Martins, this knowledge that you are trying to impart, right? Don't you think you need to write a book so that this we have a reference point that mm -hmm. we always refer to? I kept deferring it and deferring it and deferring it until this year when one of my friends... You mean asked, last year? No, sorry, yes. <laughs> until last year, rather, yes. Until last year when one of my friends told me that, see, have you written this book already? I said, okay, don't worry. I've had enough. Okay. I'm going to put something together. Now, my challenge about putting things together was that I needed to make it understandable because this thing is not just about me teaching accountants mm. it's about the everyday person the average joe okay the average guy who runs an account in a bank or the average sme business who is trying to ensure that he maximizes the returns on uh, his deposit or a deposit yeah how do they understand bank statement forensic audit and all that stuff. My subtitle is Demystify Bank Statement Forensic Audit for Individuals and Businesses. Yeah. I didn't say experts. Now, the okay. beauty is this. What I now did to ensure that my aim and uh, my aims and objectives were uh, uh, achieved, right, with the book, was I ensured that I impute uh, uh, several case studies, right, okay. in terms of amortization schedule how to calculate amortization yeah. schedule amortization for, for mortgage peculiar to mortgages yeah. mortgages and all that stuff how to calculate debit interest on loans how to calculate credit interest on loans how to do you know i broke it down for each form of calculation possible mm. and what i now did was this there are several softwares you cannot do bank statements for ensic audit without a sound understanding of data analytics, right? Now, there are a couple of softwares that you can use, but because of the fact that bank statements across various banks are not uniform, yeah, it renders almost impractical in... yeah. <laughs> to use a software to yeah. automate the bank yeah. statement. Because first, first because... of all, you need, you need to extract the data before you... Yes. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Now, apart from extracting the data, it is also important. One of the major ingredients of bank statement forensic audit is the narration of the transaction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, the narration of the transaction in bank A is normally different from bank B. Now, when you upload it into a software, you will be able to get what you want because the configurations are different. Yeah. So, we now have resort resorted to using your good old Excel. Your good yeah. old Excel, you know, is what we use for the bank statement forensic audit. And it's, it's, it's what uh, a lot of data analytics experts also yeah. use mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. analyzing, sorting data, cleaning up data, getting the data integrity, removing noise from data and all that stuff. Yeah. Now, you cannot use Excel without understanding formulas. Of course. So what I did also is that I updated the formulas that I use for any of those calculations. Okay. I mean, hey, you have done, you have done all, the, all the big, all the heavy lifting. Heavy lifting, yes. So if you pick up the book, the funny thing is that there is no how. If you follow it to the latter, do exactly what the book does. Even though you never studied accounting or you never studied banking or whatever, you will be able to achieve exactly what I can achieve. Okay. Okay. But uh, I, I I see one, one stum stumbling block. Uh, okay. Somebody Which... who is uh, diligent and uh, patient 
to do that. See, because I, I, I used to do a little bit of this, okay? And especially when I was in control, I do a in lot of, yeah. Yes, I do I do a lot of uh, reconciliation. And when I was in the business uh, office, I used to do some of this when customers come and complain about the their charges. I, I was the one who had to recalculate all the charges maybe for one or two years to make sure it's correct. So I used, I, I did all this before in, in the past. And I know it takes so much time. Okay. Just just to sanitize the data takes so much time. And so uh I I see I see you uh getting a, a lot of uh, customers coming to you to go out to come out and do work for them. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, I'll be glad to uh, any day, any time. Because what I even do is that for all the trainings I've held, mm. right, in bank statement forensic audit, I always have this catch for my students. I always tell them that do not think that because you are paid for a training, I am going to dump you, right? Because okay. you are paid for the training and that's the end of our relationship. If you have a job, Probably you have a client that comes to you yeah. and say, okay, help me do bank statement for us. But if you can say, ah, come, Mr. Martins, can we do this thing together? Or please, can you help me check what I've done, mm. right? And all that stuff. It's a level playing field and all that stuff. You know, scratch my back, I scratch yours and everything. And um, funny enough, you know, the beauty about life is this. Eh? Practice makes perfect. Room wasn't yeah. built in a day. Once you're actually interested in back statement forensic auditing, and let me tell you something, this is something that people actually make loads of money from. Imagine a situation in which a particular firm is able to recover one billion, for instance, for a client and charge ten uh, percent, which mm. is the least they can ever charge. Yeah, that's yeah. a hundred million. That's a hundred million in fees as a consultant. Yeah. We are actually starting off, we are partnering with some universities in Nigeria, right, to start off the Certified Bank Statement Forensic Auditors Program, mm. which is supposed to be like, um, a, which is a professional certification for bank statement forensic auditors who will specialize in reviewing bank statements and being able to um, demystify, you know, issues, that might be inherent in such statements. Wow. So it's over time, by the time you, you know, practice over time, you will learn quicker ways of being able to achieve the same thing that somebody like me will probably be able to achieve in, um, uh, in, in, in a couple of days and yeah. all that stuff. And you, because, or somebody else, because you are still a startup, would achieve yeah. in probably a month, right? Now, for organizations, right, I always recommend those guys that sent their accountants to, to us for trainings and all that stuff, I always tell them that they shouldn't wait till the end of the year if they start reviewing their bank statements for, you know, loopholes and everything. Yeah. On a monthly, depending on the volume of their transactions, yeah. right, they can even make it a weekly uh, basis, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that it won't take you so much time. By the time you do it on a weekly basis, if you have so large a volume. Imagine a Nigerian bill is, for instance, how much volume they will have in their account and all that stuff. Yeah. So if, if they wait till the end of the year before they it's are reviewing their account statement, obviously it will be an Akulian task yeah. and all that stuff. But yeah. if the accounting team and their treasury team right, can you know review on a regular basis, that will also help them. Same with an individual. You understand, you'll be able to spot, you know, issues pretty, pretty fast. So good. that's it. We always vendor after training support and stuff like that. Very good. Very good. And it's something that everybody should know. Because yeah. so far you have a bank state, you have a bank account. Mm. So as long as you have a bank account, you need to understand. And, and, and you, are, you, 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 are, you get charges. Yeah. Yeah. You should. Yes, because least... you. No, if you have a bank account, you must have charges now. If that one yes. is that one is yeah. that, that's 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 true. That's true. That's true. I, I mentioned something earlier that uh, I did reconciliations. Now yes. I know I know rec bank reconciliation and 
bank statement, forensic audits are not the same. Okay. At all. I know that I know to people who are laymen like me right now, okay, might think they are okay. that's that the same. But tell us how are they different? Okay, I will explain it in layman terms. I won't okay. be too technical. Okay, right? don't. Yeah. Even even in my book, what I did was I was not too technical so that okay. every average Joe will be able to understand what I'm mm. writing about, right? Now, when you say reconciliation, mm -hmm. you are just trying to match source documents with entries. Okay. Right? Now, for instance, what do I mean by source documents? A source, an example of a source document is your deposit slip. You yeah. deposited 10,000 naira or 10,000 pounds, right? You want to find out whether the 10,000 pounds matches the 10,000 credit entry in your bank statement. Okay. Now, another example of a source document is a check, a check leave. Yeah. You issued a check for a debit. You want a debit of 100,000 pounds. You want to find out whether the 100,000 pounds matches the, the debit entry of 100,000 pounds yeah. in your bank statement. Now, okay. that is a reconciliation. Good. Right? Now, if there is a difference along the line, right? If there is a difference along the line, you now run um, a script or an Excel script to say, come, these are my source documents. Yeah. And these are the entries passed by the bank. How come this difference exists? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That is what you are doing in the consideration. Okay. You are matching source documents with entries. Now, when you are talking about bank statement forensic audits, it's a different ballgame. Okay. Now, bank statement forensic audit is inclusive of reconciliation yeah. for several steps ahead Above. of reconciliation. Yeah. Because in bank statement forensic audit, what you are now trying to do is dig deeper. Now, what is forensic? When you hear anything forensic, you I'll say it in layman's language. When you hear anything forensic, what you are trying to do is provide evidence. Hmm. Okay. Is evidence-based investigation. Is an evidence-based okay. investigation. Now, you are now trying to look at the laws that guides entries. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. There is what they call the CBN guide to bank charges. I know a lot of bank customers do not even know that it exists. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of bank customers do not even know that it exists. But we talked about that extensively mm. in the book, How to, Con How to Conduct the Bank Signal Forensic Audit. There is also CBN circulars. Because okay. outside the CBN guide to bank charges, there is also CBN circulars, okay. which affects the kind of charges that banks should debit their customers, mm. right? Now, a forensic auditor needs to understand all the details of those charges, uh, sorry, sorry, the laws, the applicable laws that guide the entries. Okay. Now, let me even take it a step further. Bank statement for audit even takes it a step further to the extent of recovery. Okay. In reconciliation, we are not talking about recovery. We are just talking about matching, matching entries. Apple for apple, um, orange for orange, and things like that. Yeah. We are not talking about the recovery leg of it. In okay. bank statement for audit, you will learn how to, after you have discovered errors, how do you go about recovering your funds? Mm. And not just recovering your funds. A lot of people, I'm sure, do not even know that they can recover their funds with applicable interest yeah. on the recovered amount, which a lot of people do not know. Yeah. <laughs> Tr so, interesting. You see, you see that bank statement forensic audit right now is a deeper form. Yeah. You can't even compare it. And in, in reconciliation, reconciliation is a regular process mm. to reconcile statements rec regularly but bank statement forensic audit is a periodic investigation you understand yeah it, it yeah. can be carried out on a monthly basis or the six month basis or when you have suspicion that you know 
there are discrepancies in your mm. in your bank account statements and all that stuff. So those are the two major uh, uh, differences between your regular reconciliation and your forensic uh, investigation. Okay, okay. In Nigeria, where you live, where I used to work, yeah, the CBN is lord in in banking. And they provide guidelines of all these things. Now, what are they currently doing to educate bank customers on things like uh, bank uh, bank statement forensic audit? Okay. Now, the uh, most recent um, law that relates to that is the National Financial uh, Literacy Framework. Okay. Um, I think it was brought out in 2015 and all that stuff. Now, it uh, the National Financial Literacy Framework outlines responsibilities mm. to one, regulatory authorities like uh, PENCOM, NDIC. What, what, what's PENCOM? That's the Pension Commission. Okay. Yeah. Those are the guys that regulate uh, uh, pension fund managers and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. NDIC is the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Commission yeah. and all the rest of them. Now, apart from that, there are responsibilities that commercial banks, microfinance banks, companies in general, right? Associations and mm. all that stuff. Right. Now, part of the responsibilities of financial institution is actually to provide financial literacy education, right? And to actively sponsor CSR, that's yeah. corporate social responsibility programs, Yeah. right? Now, part of the CSR is probably providing trainings, right? Trainings, you know, they can even pick up copies of a, a, a financial literacy book like this one, and um, distribute and all that stuff. And a lot of people do not even know that CSR, according to the um, uh, corporate um, uh, taxation law, okay. right, is tax deductible, right? Mm, so mm. what do I mean by tax deductible? If you, for instance, as a corporate organization, as a microfinance bank and everything, buy a hundred thousand copies of this, uh, of a book into financial literacy mm. and you organize a training for your customers on how to, you know, conduct a bank statement forensic audit. And you probably spend a hundred million doing that. Do you understand? Yeah. If your tax liability is one billion at the end of the year, you can remove your hundred million spent on CSR. Wow. You, okay. you remove it from the from the from your tax liability. And you won't have spent your own money. It won't affect your bottom line. Mm. That's what a lot of them do not even understand. That's why knowledge is power. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, they're, they're supposed to be ex experts at, at that, as you know. They, but you will be surprised how many people do not know. Yeah. And they are in the same financial institution. This, a lot of them do not know. And even those that know, I be reluctant to do it. I don't know why. But your guess is as good as mine. Why they are reluctant to do it? So let's just leave that matter for another day. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah. So that I don't want to sound controversial. That's why I said let's <laughs> well, leave for another you, day. You can you can sound as as controversial as possible. <laughs> ah, See? See, because let me tell you, I never wanted to sound controversial on this platform, but I've also realized that. Controversy are not always wrong or negative. Actually, okay. it's the beginning of exploration. For you to, if you if you hear something, now the the thing is that it must be at least credible. Bring it, bring it on board. Let's talk about it. We don't know as long as we indicate. This is what I've heard. This is where I heard it, at least to let the audience understand where you heard it. Say, hey, if you read something in a newspaper, if you, if you heard it on TV, 
say it and then we continue the exploration to so talk about it okay 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 let me since you said you don't mind me being slightly controversial no no let I'm me not, be I'm slightly not, controversial I'm, yeah there is a certain defunct bank mm. that no longer exists okay right during those periods in which we still add commission on turnover that's okay. COT. Ah, COT. Before, before it was changed to comment account maintenance fee, mm. right? A friend of mine who was in IT, you know, we just met somewhere and he said he was going to work on a weekend. And I said, come, let's assume his name is John. That's not his real name. I said, John, well, what are you going to do at work on a Saturday? He said, ah, uh, he's my MDO and all that stuff. I said, ah, your MD. This was a long time ago, so it's not something that happened recently. He said it was my MDO. I said, what, what do you mean by it's my MD? He said, ah, he wants us to add the uh, zero point uh, <laughs> zero one or something to the COT figure so that we can improve our profit balance after sheets. tax because the balance sheet, uh, no, public profit after tax, not balance sheet, profit, okay. profit after tax okay. mm. for that particular quarter because it wasn't looking so good. Now, imagine if COT was 2 and you are just adding 0 0.1. Mm. You know, to an average Joe, it's not easily noticeable. No. Because you're adding just 0, 0 0.1 yeah. mm -hmm. behind the 2. Yeah. But imagine when you're doing that across... Two million accounts or three million or five million accounts. Mm. Now you can see the people I'm talking about. Something yeah. happened to me recently. I won't mention the name of the bank. I did a transaction, right? And uh, it was sales of dollars. It was six hundred and fifty dollars that I withdrew. I transferred bank to bank. Okay. That is from one particular bank to the same bank, but another customer. That okay. is called an internal transfer. Yes, you are not supposed to be charged. Yeah. Right. So, like, basically, what I discovered was they were supposed to debit me six hundred and fifty dollars. Mm. Right. They ended up debiting me six hundred and fifty three point two five dollars. Mm. And they are supposed to have separated principal from whatever charges. From the charges. And yeah. there wasn't supposed to be any charge in the first place. Yeah. So I didn't see a debit of six fifty dollars. I just saw a debit of 653.25. No narration, nothing. Okay. <laughs> I now just sent, sent them a message and said, come, where is this thing coming from and all that stuff? Yeah, they because said, that's not, that wasn't uh, what, what you asked for. They said uh, the extra was because of a uh, uh, mobile, uh, mobile transfer fee. I said, can you show me where that is in CBN Guide to Bank Charges? Okay. When we started playing and all that, so I said, come, you guys, you don't know the kind of person that you guys are dealing with. This is what I do for a living. <laughs> yeah? If you can't prove it to me, you better reverse it very fast. Anyway, what <laughs> long story short, in less than 24 hours, that money was reversed. Okay. Now, <laughs> now many people, many people who, need, who know to ask those questions, they will not do, even notice it. Yeah. Do you understand? Now imagine a situation in which you debit $3.25 mm. times 1 million. Yeah. That's $3 million. Yeah. Multiplied by 1,100, which is the exchange rate in, in Naira to Naira. Mm. That is over 3 billion Naira. Wow. You get the maths now. Yeah. Mm. And that is, but you will not look at it as in ah, it's just three dollars. What's the big deal? But that is the quantum of the problem we have. Mm, mm, mm. Well, uh, it's uh, it's exciting, and uh, you have uh, you have a, a lot of work to do to educate your clients, get them on board, and work with them and help them recover some money, and maybe. For you also to 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 charge them some big big fees for the work. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, let me tell you something. Eh? Mm. At the end of the day, it's a win-win. In the sense yes. that, yeah, if I'm recovering funds for you, I'm recovering funds that you did not expect is going to come back to you. Yeah. So it's going straight into your bottom line. 
Do you understand? Mm. So it's a win-win for everybody. So it's not yeah. a matter of I'm just smiling to the bank. I'm adding value to you of by course. helping you review your accounts. Exactly. Of course. So yeah. it's, that, it's that simple. That's good. That's good. That's good. So uh, you know me, we are finished talking about what you do. Okay. Let's talk about what I do. Okay. And part of what I do is reading a lot of different books. You know, I love to read and uh, I encourage my audience to read. And uh, as we can see behind you right now, uh, you have a lot of books behind you. See, I like to I ask my guests to recommend uh, five books to my audience. So you are the first guest for the year 2024. So please recommend five books to my audience. Uh, okay. Um, wow. Five books, five books. Um, let me start with this one, which is a lovely one. Okay. Um, it's called Goals by Brian Tracy. Oh, okay. It, it will, very, it will very teach good one. To, yeah. Yeah. Yes. It will teach you how to set goals for yourself and all that stuff. Right. Um, let me pick another one. Uh, the real money. The real, the real money. money. Yes. This one is by Sam Pastor Sam Adeyemi. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I yeah. I, lo I love this. Uh, I I I follow him on several uh, social media platforms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The secret to wealth beyond cash. Mm. Um, it teaches you that to actually achieve wealth and all that stuff, you need to create value. Yeah. Because a lot of people just think that wealth creation is just, just ah, happens. Let me just ask people to give me their money. Mm. It's just like what we're talking about, bank statement forensic audit right yeah. now. I can only make money if I give you value by conducting okay. and getting money back for you. Exactly. Value creation is key, right? Very good. Very um, good. This one is also a very, very good one for those that are entrepreneurially minded. Yeah, right? what was it called? It's, it was written by David Lester. Was starting it? Starting your own business. By okay. David Lester. Okay. It's starting your own good. business. Hmm. Starting now, your own business. Now, when, when it comes to starting Lester, a business. The good, the bad, and the unexpected. Oh, okay. It will teach you, basically, that it's not just all rosy. You can't uh, start your very, own very business. Very good. Very good. And you expect not to have, you know, yeah. ups Up and, and down. downs and stuff like that. <laughs> it is bound to come. And yeah. the unexpected. There are so many un unexpected. Yeah, good, good and bad. Challenges. Yes. Right? Now. The fourth one I would recommend is execution, the discipline of getting things yeah, done. I have it by up there. Larry Bossidy yeah, I have it up there. Taran. See, execution. You you re you remember our boss uh, Eddie Ubugu? Yes. Okay. When he came, when he when he came back to Nigeria from Kenya, uh, as the school of uh, City Group uh, operations. I was uh, working under him, and the first assignment he gave me was to get these books. Okay, I bought several tens of copies for all the managers in operations, and I also got a, a copy for myself. Yeah, that's that's one of one one of the things that uh, Eddie did. That everybody who is a manager in operations must get a copy and read the copy. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. And obviously, I've mentioned four books now. Yes. And yours? The final one Yes. that I obviously recommend Yes. is my new published book, which yeah. is How to Conduct Bank Net Forensic Audit. Very good. Very <laughs> good. Yomi Masters. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. So, thank you for okay. that. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. You see, this podcast is mainly for young people, mainly, okay? I'm not saying 
only for young people, but mainly for young Africans. We have a lot of work to do in Africa. Okay, we have a lot of work to do in Africa, and we have a army of young people to do, to do the work. But if they don't engage in value adding work, nothing will happen for Africa. So, see, I like to advise young people how they can contribute their little quota to the development of their communities. So, please advise young Africans. Well, basically, um, see, Africa is a youth-based continent. Let mm. me put it that way. Um, Nigeria particularly, which is the giant of Africa, as approximately 60% um, of our population as youths. And the same thing is actually almost everywhere, everywhere in the whole of the African continent and all that stuff. That means for us to have the tomorrow we desire today, our future actually lies in the hands of the average African youths. Yeah. Now, um, Charity, they say, begins at home in the sense that we have several challenges that the African continent face yeah. in terms of unemployment, um, resources, um, infrastructure, and all that. Now, what the average African youth should actually try and do is to look at the challenges they have within their immediate environment and look at the ones that they have the skills inherent or they can work with a team to solve, right? It's as simple as that. You don't have to complicate things. It doesn't even have to be something that will require a arm and a leg or so much finance. Let me give you an example. If you have a problem with pollution, for instance, in your community. Probably the drainage system is always polluted and stuff like that. What stops you from organizing the youth association in your neighborhood to ensure that you create awareness amongst them that come dumping um, nine on and stuff like that in drainages and all that? Yeah. Will obviously cause the drainages to get blocked and affects everyone. everybody during the raining season and stuff. I'm just using the most, you know, minute example yeah. that I can easily just... So you don't need to look at, oh, until I do a multi-million Naira project and all that stuff before I'm able to impact my com community as I'm very good. you. It very can good. be as simple as, for instance, in, in your estates, there might be some young guys who are medical doctors or who are nurses and all that stuff. And you just do free high blood pressure checkup on a particular weekend, maybe last Saturday, or you are impacting on their health, on Very people's good. health. Very good. Right in your community. So a lot of people always look at grandiose projects before mm -hmm. they feel they can impact their community. Right. I want them to look at the low hanging fruits first. And when you look at the low hanging fruits, Cumulatively, when you have so many low hanging fruits, there is no how you will not have a measure of improvement in your society. It's as simple as that. Ex excellent. And my own, as a, I will still want to ascribe myself as a youth, even though I'm getting out of that bracket of the youth, right? I'm getting out of that bracket. But my own contribution is financial literacy, yeah. which will also ripple into financial inclusion. So I'm doing my own part of the deal, and I'm also working with several other professionals and organizations Very good. in financial literacy. So it's the low-hanging fruits that I'm picking already, and I'm starting my crusade roots. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. See, the examples you just gave are very, very simple. That every young person can start with. See, the environment, uh, environment is very, very crucial. 
for example, all over, all over our communities, our drainages are blocked. Why? Because we dump rubbish in that in the in, the, in our uh, drainages. So yeah, uh, clear your drainages and teach people how not to dump things in there. Thank you for exactly. that. Exactly, education. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Now, my last question. See, I want you to look at our continent, look at our country. What, what is your vision for Africa, for Nigeria in the next uh, 20 to 30 years' time? Uh, that one is a tough question. Though. It's more than jump question. Really? <laughs> if I is a PhD question, wow. In the sense that, let me let me tell you why I say it's a PhD question, right? You see, I can have dreams for my continent. Yes. Uh, because Africa has so much potentials in terms of um, human and natural resources. Yeah. Which are uh, being raped, you know, by um, neo-colonialism. Uh, okay. I, I, I don't mind saying that very, very boldly. Okay, okay. And um, I, I pray that um, especially Francophone Africa gets out of that shackles okay. as as they can. Yes. And I'm saying it. Yeah, when, when, it com when it comes to Francophone Africa, yes, I... I, we all see it clearly. Yeah. Very good. Now, when we start annexing our resources and start making our human capital get retained in the continent, mm. because we have the best doctors in the world, we have the best architects, we have, you'll be surprised if there is a particular a family in the UK that I think every one of them uh, got a first class and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. we are a brilliant continent. Yeah, Nigerians okay. and Africans in general. How come we can excel in our own motherland? Okay, that is what you keep on asking yourself. Okay, how come we can excel? Because the best best brains keep on running abroad. So when you tell me to have dreams. You can have dreams with extraneous factors like also corruption in governments. Mm. You can have dreams. You only have illusion. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not a um, um, a skeptic or a pessimist. I try not to be. But before I can have dreams for a new Africa, uh, we have to one. The youth, starting from the youth, look at the low hanging fruits that they can um, they can address first. That is number one. Number two, they need to participate more actively in our political ecosystem. Okay. Because when you are sixty percent of a continent and your voice is not being heard or you are not impacting the, pol the, the, the politics in that continent, what is the same youth that collects the bribes and puts bad governments in place? Mm. Do you understand? So how can I have dreams? How can I have dreams? It's just like the poem Africa, My Africa by uh, David Diop. Africa, my Africa, Africa of proud warriors in ancient savannah. After singing all the praises, our back is bent because we bend to one political stagnation, corruption, neocolonialism, exit of our human capital. How can a country develop without our human capital, the best of the best of our brains? See, see you, for instance. Are you not part of the exits? You are in the UK. 
Now, yes. one of the best brands, you work for one of the best banks in Nigeria. Okay. I see you. You are right there in the UK. Why can't a Nigeria be able to retain you if, would you not have contributed more if you were in Africa, but yes. you have decided that, to that, contribute that, that, more that, that's, from that's the true. UK? That's true. You are fighting your battle from the UK to influence Africa. But well, do you know how many thousands have also left? Mm. So you see that this is the reality of our time, and you tell me to have dreams. I can't have dreams. I can only have nightmares. Well, see, uh, I, I, I will tell you, I agree with most of what you say, okay? Uh, and I wish I'm in Africa right now. I will tell you the truth. I wish I, I have I had the opportunity to be back home from 12 years ago. And that was my plan. Okay. Unfortunately, you know what happened. Okay. Uh, but, but uh, as soon as possible, maybe this year, uh, I will be, I will be coming to Africa more often. And that's my, that's my dream. Now, even, even though all those things you mentioned are very very true what i would tell you is this we should not allow those things to stop us from having dreams because if we don't have dreams no execution okay because you cannot you cannot execute something you have not imagined i know i know well, I, I can't say I know, but I hear. Okay, that's the truth because I I haven't been I haven't lived back home, so I don't really know. All I can say is what I used to know. I hear how hard it is. Okay, but we we cannot stop having dreams, and that's one of the things that I have this platform to continue encouraging. People like you who are working very hard to say, hey, these things are true, but we still need to continue fighting. And that's the, that's the beauty of human beings. See, if you look back at our ancestors, okay, I'm not, I'm, when I say our ancestors, I'm not just talking about Africans, the human, our human ancestors. We are where we are today. A, the the advancement of civilization from the last two thousand years to now, it's unimaginable. If anybody from back then, from two hundred years ago, see us today, hey, where we are today. It's not was not imaginable to them. So progress. We are making progress. Yes. O us in Africa, uh, progress has not been as uh, as rapid as we, we wish it to be. But but it is our responsibility to make it happen. Can I quickly say something? Okay. Let me quickly say something. You see, it saddens me that I cannot mention the exact names, mm. but it was in the news recently, right? There was an inventor. You'll be surprised from which country. There was an inventor, um, a Ugandan. Okay. I can't remember his name right now. Who invented a vehicle a prototype, very beautiful prototype, okay. right? And a drone as well that were powered on radioactive energy. Okay. Not even solar. Okay. Radioactive energy. People radio, came from the United States. You mean radio, it can be radio, radio radioactive. Radio wave. Radio, radio wave, wave. Okay. sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not radioactive. Yeah. That was the yeah. sleep of form. Radio wave, mm. right? Mm. Now, powered by radio wave. Okay. Now, people came from the United States 
to validate that discovery to okay. to actually see that you know it wasn't just um you know um a fluke or okay a, a false you know or a fallacy they validated it and they said wow do you know that the guy told those white guys mm. that the ugandan government was about truncating his efforts before mm. they came to do that validation well so how can you want progress when your own government is even against you mm. and that's well, it's not peculiar to, peculiar to uganda mm. it's 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 across it's across the globe this is the point see uh, I don't see. I don't know much about that particular invention, okay? Uh, but see, yeah. this is this is why we need to build our entrepreneurial ecosystem because all these things are not the work of, of government. They are not the work of government. See, in truth. It's private. People, it should be supposed to be private sector driven. See, people understand these things. They are politicians and civil servants. They are not marketers. They are not entrepreneurs. Okay, they don't understand these things. People in government, most people in government, have never sold one a a a, a t shirt. They don't know how to sell. The, the fund they have, they're using on gov in government, they didn't earn it. They didn't earn it. So they don't, they don't, they don't know how these things work. So we, we should not expect them to come and... See, of course, they can... If, you, if, if somebody does something ex extraordinary, they come there and take pic pictures as the governor, uh, president, senator, but they don't understand anything else. So let's look at building our entrepreneurial ecosystem. See, this is part of, of the work we need to do. See, hey, and I will tell you, we're doing a lot of different interesting things in Africa. A lot of Definitely. interesting things, you know. Yeah. Definitely. Anyway, well, as I as you said, you, you are very very correct saying that uh, we shouldn't um, let the hope die. We yeah. should keep the hope alive. Yeah. I envisage an Africa that um, we would concentrate more on our strengths. Uh, our strengths in terms of we are still the only continent with. Um, robust um, um, natural environment in terms of uh, our animal life, our, 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 our forests and all that stuff, apart from the Amazon, you know, great potentials for, for tourism. That's yeah. one key area that we need to, you know, uh, look at, but we need to also uh, address the insecurity yeah. which would discourage people. Yeah. I also look, I also pray that to have an Africa that will be able to retain more of our human capital so okay. that yeah. development is also faster and attracts back home those that are already doing things abroad and all that stuff. Very I good. also look at an Africa in which we will start making, funny enough, we have actually started making our own vehicles our own using yeah. more of yeah. our own technology yeah. instead of depending on the foreign and western or asian technology there is no reason why innocent for instance should not be the official car that we have in nigeria or mm. some other brand that is being um, produced here in the country do you understand it just takes the willpower of governments to you know get some of these things done so you cannot remove it totally 
away from government okay. and leave it in the hands of the private sector mm -hmm. as well. So Africa actually has one of the best brains and all that stuff. Yeah, we do. World. We do. And um, I, I, I pray that we'll get there in the next um, 10, 20 years, like you said. We'll get, we'll get there. To bring back we'll get there. Capital. Yeah. It's, 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 it looks difficult, but we will get there as long yeah. as we are dedicated to making her work. You yes. Know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Yomi, sure. man, it's been uh, an exciting uh, start of the year, you know, and uh, I'm happy to have had you on the, on the Think Big for Africa podcast. My guy. Thank you very my much. My brother. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Take you care. very, very much, bro. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. yeah.